2022. I am Melissa Scafano. I'm the president of the commission. Um, as permitted under Assembly Bill 361, all commission members are teleconferencing from remote locations. Also consistent with Assembly Bill 361, all public comment will be taken telephonically. So to begin with, I'll start the roll call for my fellow commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo, are you here? Present. Great. Commissioner Ho? Here. Commissioner Jefferson? Here. Commissioner Vincent? Here. Present. And com Great. Thank you. And Commissioner um, Jimenez? might be on mute. He's just joining now. Commissioner Jimenez, are you present? Uh, I am present, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Okay, so um, the first order of business is uh, neighborhood council representatives. Are there any neighborhood council representatives that are here and would like to speak? I'm, I don't think there's any, so we can move on to the next item, which is item number four, public comment on non-agenda items germane to the business of the commission. Is there any public comment? There are none at the moment. Okay, thank you, Scott. Uh, next item is public comment germane to the items of, germane to the agenda items. Are there any public comment? There are none present. Okay, great. Um, so we'll move on to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes um, from the February 9th, 2022 meeting. Um, do any of my fellow commissioners have any comments on those meeting notes? Doesn't look like there's any comments. So we'll move to, is there a motion to approve the minutes from February 9th? I move to approve. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Second. Uh, second was Commissioner Zet Ho. Yep, okay, so for the record, um, so now we'll take a roll call vote. Commissioner Jefferson, how do you vote? Approve. Thank you. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Jimenez? Yes. And Commissioner Jefferson? Commissioner Jefferson, I think you're muted. I thought you already asked me. I said oh. approved. Okay, great. Am I missing any commissioners? I think we've got everyone. I also vote yes. So the um, meeting minutes have been approved. So the next item is item number seven, which is the findings to continue teleconferencing meetings pursuant to AB 361. And I'll read this paragraph. Uh, the recommendation to adopt findings and determination in accordance with AB 361, section 3E3, that while the state of emergency due to COVID-19 to, due to the COVID-19 pandemic as originally proclaimed by the governor on March 4th, 2020, remains active and or state or local officials have imposed or recommended measures to promote social distancing. This legislative body has reconsidered the circumstances of the state of emergency, arid that the state emergency continues to directly impact the abilities of the members to meet safely in person and or state or local officials continue to impose or recommend the measures to promote social distancing. So this is an action item. So I'll ask my fellow commissioners if there's a motion to approve. I move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. So we'll do a quick roll Can call. Can I ask a question? Is this just for this meeting or is that the next meeting, or is it? I'm, I'm not sure if I understand the. Uh, this allows us to continue meeting virtually for another 30 days. Um, so this will uh, allow us for if we need to meet during that time 
uh, virtually, this gives us the opportunity to do that. Okay, it's the 30 day window. Okay, thank Correct. you. So Commissioner um, Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Ho. Yes. Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. Commissioner Vincent. Yes. Um, and I think Commissioner Gardo, did I ask you or you second? You second. I right? vote yes. Okay, great. And I also vote yes. So this item is approved. Uh, so moving on to the next item, we have the Arts Activation Fund, which we are very excited about this project. Um, it's the Bangladesh Day Parade and Festival. Um, and the applicant is the Bangladesh Unity Federation of Los Angeles. It's in Council District 4 and 10. Um, I think, is it Joe, you'll be, Joe, Joe Smoke, Ben Espinoza will be presenting the project. Correct. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Right. Okay. Um, very good afternoon to everyone. Um, I am Ben Espinosa from DCA's Grant Administration Division. I'm thrilled to be here and very pleased to share that after a two year hiatus, Arts Activation uh, Fund is back, coming back to support a range of projects to support community focused um, events that will animate our public city streets and sidewalks through creative, temporary uh, artistic presentations and events. Um, it's been a while, so I thought it'd be helpful to just give a quick recap of what the program is. This is a uh, Arts Activation Fund is a monthly quick grants opportunity. Um, we carry this out in collaboration with the Mayor's Great Streets Initiative, and we also partner with downtown base arts incubator community partners who provide for us the essential uh, contracting and, and administrative support to ensure these projects are successful. Um, a reminder that the projects presented to the commission have already gone through a first round peer panel uh, review process. Um, projects applicants are here to uh, request uh, the blessing from the commission before we can advance them for uh, funding and contracting. Uh, this month, we have one proposal for consideration. Uh, Bangladesh Unity Federation of LA is requesting $7,500 in DCA grant funding for the annual Bangladesh Parade and Festival, which takes place Sunday, March 27th. Uh, Buffalo is requesting support for the parade portion only, which goes along 3rd Street in Little Bangladesh, CD10, um, and culminates in Virgil Middle School along Vermont, which is CD4. Um, Buffalo is ex expecting 2,000 people in public engagement and have submitted three letters of support, one from council member Nithya Rahman's office, one from the local neighborhood council, and another from a restaurant proprietor along the parade route. Um, representing Buffalo today is Maboub Khan and Zia Islam, who I'd like to invite now to unmute yourself. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and present a, a PowerPoint and I will ask that you pr provide a brief presentation about your project and give the commissioners a chance to ask any questions. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, Ben. All right, All right. Uh, um, the first slide, you can see uh, some pictures of uh, Bangladesh Unity Federation Los Angeles uh, parade uh, from 2019. Um, as you can see, we, the Marines have uh, joined our parade and you can see it's multicultural because the Hispanic uh, dancing troupe uh, attended the parade in that year. Next slide. Buffalo is a federation about 30 different organization of Greater Los Angeles area. It was formed in 2006 to promote unity amongst the diverse community of our uh, Los Angeles area. Our uh, principal um, objective is to project our culture and heritage and intermingle that with uh, the, the, the desperate diasporas in Los Angeles. Uh, Bangladesh uh, Day, is observed in observance of the independence of Bangladesh in the last week of March. This year, it will be Sunday, March 27. Uh, the parade is also followed by a festival which um, portrays the food and fauna of Bangladesh. Bafla also does charity work, feeding the homeless, providing winter coats and blankets, helping fire victims, donating grave plots to the needy, uh, and also providing scholarship to the deserving students back in Bangladesh, emergency help for distressed families in Bangladesh and in Los Angeles. Many artists and dignitaries have attended this, this spectacular parade that we are doing for the last uh, 
uh, 16 years. Um, uh, noted amongst them is uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti, Councilmember Tom LeBong, Paul Krikorian, Arb Wesson, Congresswoman Judy Chu, Brad Sherman, Jimmy Gomez, uh, Supervisor Hilda Solis, and many, many others. Next slide. Here's some pictures from the previous parades from 2007 to 2019. You can see uh, Deputy uh, Police Chief along with a uh, few participants with the flags, bang flag of Bangladesh and the clothes of Bangladesh along with our ex-military officers uh, getting on a Humvee provided by US Army. Next slide. You can see the parade route on Third Street along with some of the cultural activities and also uh, our dear beloved Sheriff Lee Baka joining the parade along with the float that we uh, showcase in the parade. Next slide. Here's some more pictures of uh, uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti joining the parade along with a few other displays. Uh, on the uh, lower left, you'll see my wife and kids on the float. Next slide. Some more pictures of the U.S. flag and, uh, and Congresswoman uh, Jimmy Gomez and Council Member Arv Wesson, along with a few other dignitaries in the parade. Next slide. You can see the Buffalo youth uh, participating with different other ethnicities. You can see the uh, Hispanic uh, dancing troupe assembling before the parade, and the Hawaiian uh, group uh, dancing uh, Hawaiian dance, and uh, another Hispanic group on the float. Next slide. You can see uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu. Uh, again, uh, our council member, uh, Arv Wesson, uh, ex-California uh, State Controller, John Chiang, and our dearly beloved uh, late uh, council member, Tom LeBong. Next slide. So we're requesting the $7,500 for the following things. You know, we want to make the parade more colorful. We want to add uh, a band to make the parade more resounding. We want to provide the addresses for the artists, uh, notably the Hispanic artists uh, from a from couple of ballet troops. Uh, we want to also display the balloons on Third uh, and Vermont. We want to decorate the parade route with colorful festoons and balloons and um, uh, flags. And we would like to invite local artists, representative, the rich cultural diversity of Los Angeles to the event. Next slide. So to that objective, <clears throat> we are requesting $4,000 for the artists, singers, and dancers for the remuneration. Uh, we are requesting uh, $1,000 for the instruments and uh, for the instrument hands. We are requesting $1,500 for the band as aforementioned. And we are also requesting $1,000 for the parrot route decoration. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Zia. Uh, ben, is there any other speakers or? No, I, I believe Zia is uh, the speaker from Buffa today. Okay, great. Thank you, Zia, for your presentation. Um, uh, I'll ask any if, if any of my fellow commissioners have any questions for you or comments. Um, are there any I, commissioners? I have a question. Okay. Um, are you collecting um, any other funds such as entrance fees or any other uh, advertising fees or any other way of uh, generating funding? No, we don't have any entrance fee for the event. So, th so this is the sole uh, budget for the event? No, no, we have other methods of donation, but not any entrance fees. It's a free event. We are getting donations from the members of the community, uh, from different businesses. Uh, we uh, have a magazine and you can see it on the second column. Uh, we are getting uh, all these other funds, about $47,000 uh, from uh, different other entities. Thank you. Are there any other commissioners who have any questions or comments? I just have one generally, which is um, how are you promoting this to the public? Uh, we have uh, flyers all over Little Bangladesh. We have Facebook posts. We have a Buffalo website, uh, buffalo.org. 
we also have a Facebook uh, post for Buffalo. That's where we are uh, promoting it. Uh, we are paying Facebook to uh, promote the event on our behalf. Thank you. Sure. All right, thank you for the presentation. Um, I appreciate that a lot of elected officials um, attend this, but can you tell us more about the artists that uh, you plan on inviting or have uh, joined you for a previous parade? I'm interested in um, the artists who will be part of this. Sure, we have a couple of uh, cultural organizations within our federation, namely Uttoron and Torongo. They have Bangladeshi artists who uh, are still practicing the Bangladeshi folk songs, Bangladeshi traditional songs, dances, et cetera. And we will be paying remuneration to them uh, post event, uh, during, for the event. Uh, so if, I mean, they're not uh, like nationally known, they're only known in the community, but the good thing is that, uh, I mean, that's the purpose of this event is to showcase our culture. And you'll see there's so many, I mean, one of the dance routine, um, uh, the tune of that uh, was originated from Brazil. And uh, the poet uh, who came up with the tune, his name is Rabindranath Tagore. And he got, he was a Nobel laureate in 1933. And he was the only uh, like Bang Nobel laureate from Bangladesh. Uh, and, and the tune, is a Brazilian tune. Thank you. That's what I was interested in hearing about the cultural aspect of the parade and the festivities. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. Are there any other questions from fellow commissioners? Okay, well, thank you for that lovely presentation. Um, I, this is an action item, correct? Um, yes. Tania, so um, is there a motion to approve the Bangladesh um, Day Parade and Festival for the grant of 7,500 for the parade only? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Howe. Okay, we'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Vincent, how do you yes. vote? Thank you. Commissioner Jimenez? Yes. Uh, Commissioner um, Jefferson, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Gayodra? Yes. Commissioner Ho. Yes. And I also vote yes. So the motion is approved. Thank you, and we'll look forward to. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough for the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and appreciate it. You're all welcome to join. I'll send a formal invite to Ben uh, if you can join and um, uh, taste our food and uh, enjoy our culture. We'll be really highly appreciated. Just let us know and we'll make sure that uh, you are um, uh, duly noted in the event. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it for the opportunity. Yeah. And it's exciting that there's, you know, that the parade is happening. I think we all need a good parade, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, the next item are the public art projects. Uh, the first one is the Golden Rule Flower of Life. And this is in Council District 11. Um, it's for final approval. Uh, this became came before us last month and the project amount is 35,000. And I think Felicia Filer, you'll be presenting today, correct? Yes, good afternoon. Great, thank you. Hi, um, I'll be presenting this project on behalf of Paolo, who is not feeling well today. Um, but before I start, um, I'm, I'm joined by um, Alec Bartrosu from the council office um, and Anna Apostolos from Lonnie. So I'd like to give the council office a chance to speak to this item first, and then I will tee it up provide the context and then turn it over to Anna to um, give you an update on their uh, project for final review. Uh, Thank you so much, Felicia. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Alec Bartroso. I am council member Mike Bonham's trans transportation deputy. Uh, good to meet you all. Um, I just wanted to give a quick introduction. Uh, we've been very lucky and excited to be working with Lonnie on this placemaking project along one of our great streets in Council District 11. 
Um, this is one of many improvements that Lonnie has been working on uh, for our district in our neighborhoods um, in the last several months, uh, now stretching into years. Um, so we're very happy that this is now coming forward to the commission and um, is the very last uh, deliverable that we have been highly anticipating in our district. Um, so the community is very excited. Um, we've been through several iterations of this and happy to see it uh, here before you for final approval. Um, there, are, there are some uh, real constraints that Lonnie has been working with, which I think uh, Anna will be touching on very soon. Um, and so the, there are some challenges that we're working with, but I'm, I'm uh, hopeful and confident that we'll be able to overcome that very quickly. So um, with that, I'll pass that to Lonnie. And of course, I'll, I'll be available if any questions or, or things come up that I can help address. So thank you very much. Yes, and once again, um, as Commissioner uh, Scarfano mentioned that this project came to the commission at the February 9th meeting. It received conceptual approval. Uh, the commission had some suggestions in terms of you know, the legibility of the text. Um, and so Lani, uh, this, as, as um, Alex just said, the project is under um, has tremendous time sensitivity to it. And so we, because of that, and we learned that after the February 9th meeting, that we asked um, Anna to give you uh, a context of what the timeline has been and, and why, uh, uh, you know, the project is really sort of under uh, under the clock right now and in, um, in, in seeking your support for final uh, final approval today. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it over to Anna to, to um, take you to the presentation and um, Juan, if we can um, uh, present to a share screen on her behalf. Thank you. Okay, so when we were here last month, we told you of this um, CD11 beautification project along Venice Boulevard. So F Felicia, you can just scroll through the slides. We've gone through these slides and that we're just on page 12 or 10 is the um, revised, is the, re the revised um, medallion. So, um, so the other elements that have already been implemented included five murals, pedestrian seating, landscape planners, and um, now we're working on the final eight permanent medallions. So there was a call for artists and a selection of the image for the medallions, and it was made by the community in February 2021. The shop drawings were created and the artists and engineering calculations were developed. The manufacturer offered options regarding durability. There was some issues with the um, screen printing. Um, so the artists worked with the manufacturer in order to assure that they created a long lasting uh, work of art. So last September we applied to BSL for a permit and the first of November applied to DCA for approval. So in accordance with DCA comments uh, from last month, we have altered the medallions by working with the manufacturer to enlarge the font. Because of the cutout design, there was a finite amount of revision that could be done. So we have included a photograph of the artwork. I think it's on page 10. So I think it's another couple pages, another couple slides. Yeah, there. Go back, go back to, there you go, thank you. Right. Um, okay, so um, we have a permit from BSL and an installation crew ready to be on site tomorrow. Um, as might have been mentioned, the funding expires um, at midnight on uh, tomorrow. So it's, you know, so we're, we're ready to go. And so that being said, I respectfully uh, request your final approval for this design of the Mar Vista community. Thank you, Lanny and Felicia, for presenting the project. It it looks like you you did adhere in to our comments, and I will open up uh, the floor to see if any of my fellow commissioners have any comments or questions. Um, should I just, Commissioner Jefferson, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, um, it sounds to me like we need to give you an approval so you can move forward because you need to get your money going. 
I, I think I think what I'm looking at on what was on the screen I met the concerns about make the lettering bigger, probably pulled away from some of the artistic design, but it, it's not it, it's totally if this is the solution that you needed in order for people to read the totality of your message, it, it, it's fine. I, it'll it'll do. I wouldn't stand in the way of voting for it. I liked the other design. I just wanted to see the lettering. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions? No, it addresses our comments. And I think with that jurisdiction, um, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Commissioner Gallardo. Um, I think it addresses our concerns and I'm glad it does so that we can approve it, but I would have hate, I'm just thinking about the other possibility and how we as commissioners would have felt, right, put between a rock and a hard place. So um, that's for us to discuss later, but I think it addressed um, the feedback that we gave. So thank you for that. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any comments or questions? Not at this time, thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Vincent? Um, I think it's, uh, oops. Uh, okay, I think it's a vast improvement and I think it's wonderful and I look forward to approving it. Thank you. So um, do we have a motion to approve good rule flower of life for final approval? I move, so moved. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. So we'll do a quick roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. And I also vote yes, Commissioner Scrafano. So the motion has been approved. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing your banners along Thank you. Venice Thank Boulevard. You. Thank you. Okay, the next item is the North Central Animal Shelter. Uh, this is for conceptual and final approval. It's in CD1, District Council of District 1. Um, the project amount is 8,000. And the staff, um, Serena will be presenting, Ser Serena Rivera will be presenting the project, correct? I'm tired, Rivera. Can there you are, Serena, thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, uh, Juan or Scott, can I have access to share my screen? Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, so I just want to give a brief overview. The, this project is one of um, four projects at the animal shelter site. You've approved two already and we'll be discussing another one shortly after this. The, um, so it's going to be at North Central Animal Shelter. The address is 3201 Lacey Street. Um, it's the animal services is the owner of the building. The project amount is 8,000. The artist is Jean Bastarache. And the funding source is the Public Works Improvement Arts Program. And um, so this project is in partnership with Office of Council Member Gail Cedillo. Um, we're seeking to commission a work from artist Jean Bastarache titled A New Leash on Life. And it is part of the Public Works Arts Improvements Arts Program for the newly renovated animal shelter. For the artist selection in 2020, DCA did a public call for muralists. We received over 200 applications. 120 artists were selected to be on the pre-approved muralist list. Um, and from that 120, we selected four artists to propose for this project. Um, and the community and the panel responded positively to all four um, proposals. This work is um, consists of one print, that's three by three five feet by five feet, and one original oil painting. Um, the artist will create the oil painting in his studio and then it will be printed in a larger format and installed in the lobby adjacent to the parking lot. For the community meeting, um, we held a digital Zoom meeting um, in December of 2020. Um, and and um, we shared all the designs with the public and they responded positively to all the designs and including this one as well. So the 
the artwork consists of an outdoor landscape with a ring around the rosies with um, animals and humans. Pros there, um, so maintenance will, it will be printed on a durable canvas that shall last between 80 and 100 years. And um, it will be placed behind a staff desk so it, they won't have regular access for vandalism. Um, and the pros are that art panels are permanent beautification of the newly renovated building and it will create a welcoming atmosphere. The cons are none. And I will pass it on to Julie Rico, who's the project manager with, with working with John Bostaraj on this project. Hello, thank you. I, I'm sorry, John doesn't have good Zoom functionality. So um, good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to speak about the artist John Bastarash art installation at the North Central Animal Shelter. The painting, which will be enlarged and translated into a canvas slash vinyl print, will be framed for placement, is called A New Leash on Life. Um, this is the drawing. It's not the painting uh, that you're looking at right now. So it's just the sketch for the final painting, which hopefully Serena will show you some examples of uh, his, his painting later on. Um, it pays homage to the mission and purpose of the North Central Animal Shelter. Animals joyous, joyously dance in a circle and ring around the rosy fashion around a small house with a bow on it. The house has a bow because the home is a gift to the playful animals. The dancing animals, insects, flora, and fauna reflect our relationship to nature. John will add the insects as realism. The circle the animals are running in represents the circle of life. Everything in life is connected. In the background, the LA River reminds us that Los Angeles is filled with opportunities to access nature right in our own backyard. The book, Eastern Cherokee Stories, A Living Oral Tradition and its cultural co continuance states the following. In the native worldview, all of creation and all of life are interrelated. Little Bear points out that if human beings are animate and have spirit, then all my relations must also be animate and must also have spirit. What Native Americans refer to as spirit and ener energy waves are the same thing. All of creation is a spirit. Everything in creation consists of a unique combination of energy waves. That is why, according to Cherokee speaker Tom Belt, our language and other native languages are actionable or verb-based as opposed to the English language, which is object or noun based. Native scent observes and learns from the connectedness of the surrounding ecology and how creatures of all species interact with and relate to one another, including the role people hold. The mural by John Jock Basterash illustrates the animate and spirit emphasized by this story and practiced by the North Central Animal Shelter. All these events are motivi motivated by a desire to foster connection within the community and to the natural world. Thank you. Thank you, Jean, and thank you, Serena. Um, I'll share I'll, some examples of the oil yeah, as well. That would be great. So this is from previous work. Um, and these are the oils. Do you have any questions, commissioners? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you were sending, showing us another slide. But I'll open it up to the fellow commissioners. Are there? Any? <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, it is. This is really sweet and and wonderful. Um, I can't make out on my computer screen the two little houses in the background. I think it says Heritage House and something else. Can you tell me about what they say and what their meaning is? So um, one of the, uh, when we had the community meeting with you know everybody in the community, um, they wanted, we actually had the city of LA in the background and then people in the community said, hey, you know, we have significant uh, sites here in this area, so can't you include those? So uh, we switched it up to include the Loomis House and the Heritage House. So uh, that's what's represented there. They'll look, um, they're in the distance. They won't look like 
you know, uh, perfect, but you will, if you live in the area, you'll understand what they are. That's it. Thank you. And are people able to see the oil paintings on the screen or? No, we don't see them. Stop sharing and um, reshare again. I can share my screen if you want. I got it. I think okay. it should be able to go up now. Oh yeah, that's, that's the realism. So John does realism. Um, and then just below this one is the, is the style. Here you go. These are oil paintings. Great, thank you. And you can always go to juliericogallery.com. It's beautiful, it's there. Thank you. I'll uh, see if my if there's any fellow commissioners who have any comments or questions. Uh, Commissioner Ho, do you have any comments? Yeah, Commissioner you. Jefferson. Yeah, but I appreciate you sharing the oil paintings and his, and the style of his work. Clearly, his craft is quite fine. I agree. Commissioner Gallardo, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I, I love the design. I love the pairing of unusual friends in the painting. Um, I just had a question. I think this is appropriate about lighting because um, that corner seemed a little dark and that one spotlight seemed um, uh, having installed uh, myself before seemed um, would, would be it inadequate for highlighting the work. Is there any thoughts or were there any discussions about that? So we've been working with Christy Luzon for animal services and um, she selected this spot for this work, but we will provide her that note and see what the possibilities are. I know it's a newly renovated, renovated building, so we can go. Yeah, I think the location is fine. It, I would just recommend two spotlights instead of the one over it, but also it's difficult to see in a rendering how luminous that would be, but just a note, that's it. Thank you, yeah. I'll, I'll pass it on to the animal service. I'll speak with Christy. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions or comments? I'm not this time. Okay, thank you. Well, I wanted to say it's it's very, I agree with commission, all of my fellow commissioners, but I, I think it's really sweet. And I also like the location of where you're putting the painting because it's also too not in the direct sun. So I think it'll probably last longer, but. And did I hear you correctly? It's going to be uh, made into a painting and then reproduced on vinyl. Did I hear that? Yeah. It's going to be on a canvas print. It's canvas. It'll be a canvas print. Yeah. So that so that if it, at any point it it it's ran into an issue with regards to lighting or fading, you'd actually be able to duplicate it on another canvas. Yeah. Print. Yeah. Really smart. That's great. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve item, item, uh, let's see, North Central Animal Shelter uh, for both conceptual and final? So move. Motion. Thank Se second. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Hall and Commissioner Jefferson. So we'll take a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? <laughs> Commissioner Vincent. I vote yes to a new leash on life. <laughs> Great, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo? Yes to all Commission of that. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Ho? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. And I also vote yes, so motion is approved. We're looking forward to seeing the painting. Thank you very much. And I'll give everybody a print uh, once we get permission to print them. And you oh, can yeah. all have one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Serena. So, um, so I have a quick uh, question for the city attorney. Uh, Tania, I think I uh, somehow did not ask Commissioner Ho um, for her approval of the minutes. Um, so how do we handle that? Do we go back and do that as a vote or can I ask her not as a full vote or? Uh, let's uh, 
bring it back for reconsideration, vote on reconsideration. I'm fine if you guys just do II on that. And then, okay. take, <laughs> then take a roll call vote again on, on the uh, on the motion on, on the minutes. Okay, so I apologize for that. Um, so we're going back to item number four, which is approval of the minutes from February 9th. Um, so I move I'll, to reconsider. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Does and then I have to call everyone again, right? Uh, yeah. Can we get a second and then go uh, ahead and yeah. you can do the verbal vote? I mean, the oral vote. Okay. Second. Second, second from Commissioner Gallardo. So I'll do a roll call vote again. Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Yes. Commissioner Jimenez. Yes. Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. And Commissioner Gallardo. Yes. Thank you. And I also vote yes. So the meeting minutes have been approved. Okay. So the next item before us again is another um, animal shelter project. It's uh, North Central Animal Shelter. It's in Council District 1. Um, it's for conceptual and final. And the project amount is 15000 and I think this will be presented again. Is it? Serena. Okay. Is it? <laughs> Serena, thank you. Okay. So this is um, <laughs> going to be at the North Central Animal Shelter, same site, 3201 Lacey Street. Um, the owner is Animal Services, and it's the funding source is the Public Works Improvement Arts Program as well. Um, so this has also been in collaboration with um, the Office of Council Member Gil Cedillo, and um, it went, underwent the same selection process. So the 2020 muralist um, open call RFQ, and then we had the 200 applications, 120 were received. We selected four artists, um, including Ricardo Mendoza. So um, Ricardo Mendoza's Empathic Portals was one of the... Um, proposals that was submitted and that had a positive feedback from the, both the panel and the community meeting. The community me me at the same community meeting that was held um, in December 2020 via Zoom because of COVID restrictions. And um, so we obtained feedback and then Ricardo um, responded to it with his work and we selected, um, so he, we selected him for one of these projects. Um, the, the, it will be, the artwork will consist of a, um, inset tile mosaic in the, a, in the, the wall just adjacent to the outside of the lobby. So it'll be a welcoming, um, mosaic in the front that will consist of a colorful, um, landscape, sort of magical landscape with animals and humans. And, um, the maintenance for the Thailand grout, um, they have a long-term durability and can be washed with light water applications. Um, there is no ne necessity to um, power wash with heat and um, it could be power washed occasionally with, the, with no heat required if there's tagging um, and, or it could be easily removed with, uh, uh, sorry, an approved remover to make sure the tile is not damaged. Um, the artist will offer and retain all notes, glazings and tile mappings to assist with any future need to manufacture the same replacement tile in the area in the rare event that a physical damage or vandalism. And the pros are the mosaic as a permanent beautification of the newly renovated animal shelter. Um, it will create a welcoming atmosphere as you enter into the building and the cons are none. And I wanna open it up to Ricardo Mendoza. Thank you so much for joining and I'll share my screen of the rendering. Everyone can hear, hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, hello commission, thank you for meeting. I'm Ricardo Mendoza. Um, this project um, is, a, is a reimagining from, from a larger footprinted um, proposal um, for a new location uh, at the animal shelter. I'm gonna just read from my, um, my original narrative just the first paragraph, and then I'll I'll um, segue over to some some uh, content notes. The work began as a contemplation upon our relationships to animals and their um, and how they often seem as ambassadors or portals to a deeper spiritual connection with our presence here on Earth. 
I imagined animals as embodying the greater mystery of nature and the planet. The work emphasizes relationships to human exchange with animals and animals to humans. The larger hero animals are embracing humans who are simultaneously embracing animals. A symbiotic relationship of love and empathy while referencing the organic and natural worlds. I will, uh, I will, I will prefer these figures refer to both the young and older versions of the relative species depicted um, as with the dog and cat. So honoring the longer generational bond and caring for the animals. <clears throat> Depicted larger and smaller scale, these animals are occupying both night, fall, and day energies in balance with light energy emerging from within the figurative forms. The work is also composed with radiant movement from um, and light flowing towards the large dog's heart. Mosaic core scenes are flowing outward from their source, suggesting healing energy expansion like ripples and water onto the surrounding context. So um, footnote wise, a, um, this is a contemplation upon a deeper relationship to animals and animals to humans, re-envisioned as portals of spiritual connections with our presence here on earth. I imagine animals is embodying the greater mystery and nature of the planet, emphasizing the bond journey and deeper connections stirred by forming relationships with animals. The larger hero animals are embracing humans who are, you know, actually, I think I'm not going to, I'm going to skip this because I actually covered that in the, um, in the first paragraph. I want to read to you a quote that was inspirational to me for this project. Until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. That's by Untold France. This quote was also an inspiration allegorically depicting as a journey of awakening with, with, with opening our hearts to exchange our lives with animals. With a focus on the breeds most commonly housed at the shelter and reference to the wild with human and animal morphs. Uh, these references are also viscerally informed by my own experiences of having bonded with and caring for animals, many different breeds throughout my, my life. I intended to convey and honor an emotional sense found in this exchange and life experience. So uh, mosaic course scenes are also flowing out. I think I already mentioned that. So that sort of covers what I wanted to say about content. Um, and I think I can mention that the imagery is also intended to communicate content with color by means of handmade inlay ceramic fired tiles. Each tile uniquely formed and installed with fluid grout line coursings to emphasize form and aesthetic character. All mosaic elements are hand glazed with painterly characteristics as possible. My goal is to deliver immediately impactful scale from an approach as well as upon closer viewing with elements of surprise and crafted detail installations. Some smaller figurative subject matter is intended for hand cut vitreous glass inlay for greater detail and luminosity. Um, that, um, covers, that covers the, 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 yeah. the, the bulk of the process I approached this with, so. And then yeah. I'm sharing some images of um, Ricardo's um, method. So you can see the mural mapping um, from a previous project here. And um, I would like to share a final um, mosaic that he's done in this type of style as well to give a sample. So this is um, the Firestone Metro Blue Line Station stop and it, the title is A Will to Progress. And I believe Um, I have one more shot that's a little bit an overall of the several mosaics at the same site. Okay, and do we have any questions regarding this project, commissioners? Um, thank you both Ricardo and Serena. Um, do any of my fellow commissioners have any questions or comments? Um, I think that in a 
more fair world, this would be several times larger and made of stained glass. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you. Commissioner Ho? None. It's lovely. Yep. Great. Commissioner Jefferson? Great. Wonderful way to, to, to brighten up what would otherwise be a simply dull area and give it life. Thank you. Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions or comments? No, it's very, uh, it's very beautiful. And I also wish it was on stained glass as well. Yes, I agree. It's, uh, and I loved your description, um, Ricardo, about the inspiration from the work. It was very poetic. Oh, and thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, so um, do we have a motion to approve um, the North Central Animal Shelter, uh, both conceptual and final? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. I'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Yes. Great. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. And I also, Commissioner Scafano, vote yes. And we're excited. We're excited to see the project installed. Thank you both. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ricardo. Yeah. Thank you, Ricardo. Sure, thank you. So our, our next item is under architectural submission. Um, it's the charter communication above ground facility for standard cabinets. Um, the owner's charter communication. They're seeking final approval. I think we have several speakers um, on this item. And I think who is presenting? I think Ricky Esquire. I'm sorry, Ricky, if I mispronounced your name. No um, worries. I think you will be. <laughs> are you presenting the project? Or are you? Um, the first I'm, I'm presenting on the mayor's support of the project. Great. Okay. So welcome. And uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thanks so much. Um, so good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Ricky Esked, and I'm the Deputy Director of Neighborhood Services for Mayor Garcetti. Um, thanks so much for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you today and discussing above ground facilities. Um, the upcoming California mandate that will require telecom companies to provide resilient strategies to keep their networks operating after a power outage aligns with Mayor Garcetti's resiliency stra strategy, excuse me. In 2018, Mayor Garcetti, in partnership with 100 resilient cities, um, released a strategy to help those city plan for future opportunities and challenges. Um, following that work, um, the strategy highlights the importance of responsiveness and communication, um, and specifically calls out the need for emergency power for critical services. Charter's installment of a battery backup AGF will help Angelinos who are in high fire threat areas to be better equipped to communicate with their loved ones and emergency responders. Um, overall, the mayor's office is grateful for the California Public Utilities Commission for putting this mandate in place and looks forward to having a more resilient city. Um, thanks again for the opportunity to speak with everyone and um, welcome any questions. Um, do any of the fellow commissioners have any questions? Are we seeing the new design? I believe. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Um, the, Ricky was here on behalf of the mayor's office just demonstrating support. And I think let's hand it over to Tammy uh, to be able to present the item. Great, thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Ricky. Hi, commissioners. This next project was presented uh, before the commission last month, and the applicant has made some changes per your comments. As a refresher, uh, the California Public Utilities Commission issued R1803011, requiring telecom providers in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 high fire threat districts to implement network resiliency strategies. 
that will keep their networks operating for 40 or 72 hours after a power outage. Charter is required to um, provide this resiliency by August 1st of this year. Um, I will hand this over to the applicant to do their presentation. Um, Charter, can you please unmute yourself and present your screen? Thank you. Uh, am I being given share rights? All right, I think I can. Forgive me, apologies. I thought I had the, the document ready. <laughs> Can you see the screen? No, I, I'm sorry, we can't. Uh, Snap, let me see what I can do here. Scott, do you think you can pull up the presentation or? Was the presentation uploaded to the folder? Um, again, I'm trying to figure out which one this is. This is the uh, Charter Communications Goodness gracious. Greatest apologies. Uh, Peter, no would you like to share? Uh, yes, please. You may proceed. Oh, there we go. I, actually, I can, I can do it now, Ricardo. Can you guys uh, see that? Yes. Okay, great. Apologies. Um, so uh, good afternoon, Peter Hidalgo, Director of Government Affairs for Charter Communications, you know, as a spectrum. And we have uh, come back uh, based on, as been previously indicated, um, the response from your initial uh, conceptual approval. Joining me on, on this presentation briefly is uh, the gentleman who you, you heard from last month, our, our construction supervisor, Ricardo Zambrana, as well as our Alpha Technologies Director. I won't repeat this, this slide because um, staff architect Tammy and uh, explain to you the the California state mandate that the governor had issued through the California Public Utilities Commission as a public safety measure, particularly those communities that are located within high fire areas. Just to refresh you, this is a, a shot from the Southern California uh, indicator. The areas that uh, are affected by this uh, state mandate are those locations in the dark red and the orange. And uh, this is a shot from uh, like Ventura County south to the Mexican border. The, the dark red color are the tier three zones, which are high, the highest fire threat areas. The orange colors are the tier two, which are considered high fire areas. And um, again, these are primary 100% uh, hillside communities with uh, large vegetation in their area. I wanted to show this portion a more, uh, the best shot that we could see of the city of Los Angeles. You'll notice that uh, a number of our um, uh, installations are primarily in, in CD4. Council District 4 has the highest number of installations of about 145 of the 530 total. And as you can see there in the orange, um, this section is primarily CD4, with, which includes um, Griffith Park, um, the Hillside Communities, Hollywood, among others. And then we go into CD6 and CD7 in the San Fernando Valley, as well as a large portion in CD11 along the west side. I thought that might be able to give you an indication that, again, 100% of these locations are designated by the state as high fire threats areas. So our response to your uh, your uh, action last month uh, was 
uh, for us to, to take a look. And one of the concerns that you had was to have the manufacturer's logo removed. So we are now presenting this. This is the uh, cabinet example that expressed some concern about the logo. And this is what the the logo removal will look like. So of the 530 locations, which would mean uh, well over a thousand um, sites will have that. Um, and for that, we are now presenting and requesting final approval of our bulk uh, AGF item. Thank you, Peter. Um, does that conclude the presentation? Yes. Great, thank you. And thank you so much for addressing our concerns from the last commission meeting. Um, I will ask my fellow commissioners if they have any questions or comments. Uh, Commissioner Jimenez, do you have any questions or I comments? Have time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Guiardo, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, I remember the logo being one of the removal, one of the recommendations, but were there others as well? I just want to be sure to close the loop on this so that it can move forward. I, I don't remember if there were others. I think the color um, it wasn't clear on the color. And I, I think yeah, Peter- there was a you... color conversation. Right. And you're suggesting the sage green color? So it blends Correct. in with the landscape. Correct. The, the, the purpose, and perhaps it would help me to eliminate the, the reasons why the uh, what we use the term seafoam green is selected. Because of the 530 locations are all within a brush um, and um, hillside uh, brush areas, 100% of the locations will have uh, foliage and landscape. And of the 4,000 locations that we are making these adjustments to throughout the state of California, the seafoam green is being implemented primarily because 100% of the locations are within hillside communities or within the national forests. Um, the 100% uh, the of the locations in the city of Los Angeles are within the hillside locations. And it was uh, when we had to place the order for these cabinets last year, the, the methodical process used was the best uh, sequence of colors was simply to, to blend in within the seafoam green landscape. And that was the primary uh, reason why the seafoam green was used and is going to be implemented throughout the entire state of California. I hope that helps to provide some additional information. Yeah, so this 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 was um, already reviewed and decided on the color. Okay, that's all right. I need to know. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Gardo. Uh, our Commissioner Jefferson, do you have any questions? I was just going to say the color of it came up in the context of what was also going to be all of the other existing boxes that were all around it. And what we were trying to address was the issue of some sense of uniformity or consistency around the city now that and and unfortunately for this particular project it came up at the time when lo and behold bigger boxes etc were now about to go all around the city and additional boxes and there's so many boxes that happen in a square foot range that at some point we needed to stop and think about what happens when you have multiple boxes and all of them start looking different and you start to lose some sense of aesthetic around the city. So I, I, I venture to suspect that what's happening here with this particular project, which is much needed, will start to drive a consistency for all of them, short of whether or not they have some artistic rendering on them. In other words, if they are not going to have an artistic rendering, this is not their problem, but if it is not going to have an artistic rendering on them, then we may want to start asking whether cultural affairs wants to ask that all the boxes going forward are seafoam green unless they have an artistic rendering and that the logos of the companies be on the side of the box, not on the front of the box, so that they don't automatically become a billboard advertising sign. And then we can start to create 
a, a prettier landscape um, for our city in some way, shape or form. So that is the context in which the conversation came up and I appreciate them. And there was still a debate about whether they were all gonna be seafoam green at the time we were talking. So I appreciate the update with regards to the color and the change in the logo and think that you may be the force that drives us about what happens with all the boxes going forward. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Uh, Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions or comments? No, as long as it's addressing our comments from last time, that's what I'm judging this on. Okay, great. Commissioner Vincent, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Hidalgo, thank you very much for so quickly being so responsive to our suggestions. Um, and I realize that the overall utility is really usurps most other considerations, but that you still took that into consideration and eliminated this being as an advertising, advertising source on 100 or 300 or 500 boxes um, and made it more compatible with the landscape. I think that in addition to making us all more secure, you're making the city a little more livable. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vincent. So on that note, um, do we have a motion to approve charter communication above ground facility for standard cabinets? It's final approval. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Second. Vincent. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. We'll do a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Gallardo, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Jimenez? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Ho? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Vincent? Yes. And I also vote yes. So thank you for addressing all of our concerns and the item has been approved. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, thank you. thank you. So the next uh, item of business here is the streetlight submission. Um, so these are action and consent items. Uh, we have matching streetlights, which is item A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. So there's four of them. Um, Tammy, would you like to show us a photo of the matching streetlight? I'm sorry. Um, I think as we were copying and pasting, that might have gone deleted. Uh, but these are the uh, standard streetlights that uh, normally come before the commission. So there weren't any uh, non-standard streetlights. Great. Thank you. So... Um... City Attorney, can we take all four items at the same time? And I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Scarfano. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I must be a pain in the butt on this one. We have several versions of standard streetlights in the city of Los Angeles. So I don't have a problem with agreeing to a matching streetlight to a standard streetlight, but I don't know which standard streetlight I'm matching to. Um, and I, I, I just don't want to be in a position where somebody comes back one day and is reading stuff and acting like we weren't doing our job. So I don't know how we solve this. Could be two seconds while we hear the general manager's report that someone goes and gets a picture and comes back. But I'm not saying yes to matching streetlight that I don't know which matching streetlight I'm matching. Sure. Let me um, okay. pull up the, the PDF uh, while uh, Daniel makes his uh, presentation. Does that work? Yeah, that works great, Tammy. So um, thank you. We can wait. Thank you. So Daniel, we're looking forward to your general manager report. Wonderful. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you, uh, Commission President. Thank you to all of the commissioners here today. Um, I just want to give kind of a quick update on on where we are on hiring and reconstitution, and uh, also just some updates on programming. Uh, so our staff is continuing to do great work. Um, during these challenging times, both moving forward on our current programming and concurrently planning as we are looking ahead um, in the not far off future as far as reconstitution and in-person activities. Um, we're continuing in our hiring. We're working uh, fervently with our teams, with our personnel staff and our internal staff at DCA to 
keep moving our interview processes forward to bring on new staff. Um, and we are looking forward to new staff being onboarded within the next, uh, the next coming months. Um, on reconstitution, we are, we are really building upon our hiring process to help support us as we move on this rec on our reconstitution. Um, our administrative staff is working to ensure that we have all the appropriate personal protective equipment um, and site preparations in place to be able to reopen to the public. Our theaters are now open and serving our communities. And we're also working closely with our partner art centers as our next steps for reopening uh, to make sure that they are prepared and to be able to reopen in the coming weeks. And following shortly thereafter, we'll continue to work towards reopening the department's managed centers. So the key commonality with all of this reopening is about hiring. Um, and so we're working sure that we're able to meet all of the personnel requirements and city requirements to ensure the health and safety of our employees and visitors. So our focus continues to be on our community facing sites and uh, at the same time, we are uh, working at looking at how we can, uh, as we look at restaffing and reconstituting our main office, um, what it will look like to bring our commission back um, into the commission meeting room. So we're working um, and gathering information from other appointed bodies as well to determine how they are doing it. On the programming front, uh, We've got a few just quick announcements. Um, we're, our Big Read program is continuing. We are celebrating 14 years of our grant funding from the National Endowment for the Arts for the Big Read. And we continue to appreciate the support from Sony Pictures Entertainment for their ongoing commitment to the program. Uh, the Big Read is a national initiative, the National Endowments for the Arts in partnership with Arts Midwest that broadens our understanding for our world, our communities and ourselves through reading. Um, next, I just wanted to share that in partnership with Council Member Kevin DeLeon and the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, we announced five finalists um, who will be presenting designs for the Community Public Art Project to be installed in the heart of Little Tokyo on Alameda and Second Streets in downtown Los Angeles. We'll be moving into the next phase of this project, including virtual community meetings scheduled uh, for March 17th, followed by a public, uh, by a re peer panel review scheduled for March 23rd and 24th. And public access uh, is available to the virtual community meeting through DCA's website at www.culturela.org uh, once a link is posted. Um, also just wanted to share that March 27th is World Theater Day and DCA's grantee and partner arts center, the Frida Kahlo Theater, will be hosting 10 Latino uh, Latina playwrights who will be writing and presenting 10 minute theater presentations as part of the festival about the Latino experience in the US. Um, and lastly, uh, our art centers, our DCA managed art centers are continuing to provide educational programming for our city's youth and families, um, including an open mic night this weekend at the Lincoln Heights Youth Arts Center and the 14th annual African American Composer Series from March 19th to June 25th at the William Grant Still Art Center, which will be presented as a curated podcast format featuring three composers, including Phil Ranelin, Tequila Mockingbird, uh, Billy Childs, and Madlib. It's actually four composers. Um, so I wanted to again, thank everyone for your service to the commission and I will hand it back over to Tammy so we can finish up the business of the meeting. Thank you. Great, thank you, Daniel. Hi. Uh, um, can I just say something before Tammy picks it up? What, uh, um, Actually, I'm sorry, go ahead, do it, Tammy, and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask a question. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, great. So this is the Bureau of Street Lighting, uh, standard street light PDF. So for this presentation or for this meeting, it'll be the 14 in or 14 foot round aluminum post, CD 851, CD 929, and CD 953. So it's gonna be page 413 and 19 and 27. Let me go there. So this one will be uh, the one that's being proposed in
uh, C. Actually, let me do it by the order of this. So this one would be, uh, item A would be CD 929. So page 19. So this is what that looks like. And you'll see that after the design number, they have like A, B, C, D, and like different uh, combinations of numbers and alphabets. And this is what that means. These are the variations within this design. So the mounting height could be a little bit different. The length of the arm could be a little bit different. And that would be item A. Um, item B is 851A. So it'll look like this and it will be, the mounting height will be 26 feet and the arm length will be four feet. Item C. will be the first one that we saw and uh, 929 and this is the one that we saw earlier and 953, this one. And then for D, it will also be this one. So when it says matching street lights, that means that on that street, uh, that is the light that will be matching what is already existing. Okay. Are there any uh, questions? Yeah, um, following uh, Commissioner Jefferson's um, uh, comment, um, do you have any photographs of the um, locations that you have noted on the agenda, where they'll be placed? Um, those would be in your package where they want to put it. Um, there are photographs? There should be uh, site photographs that were included in your package. They are attachment C. Okay, thank you. So um, are there any additional questions or comments from any fellow commissioners? Um, one, first off, thank you very much for stopping to do that for us. Um, this is not you, this is a longstanding conversation that existed before uh, you came along around the issue of please just show us an image of what it is you're asking us to approve so that we can we can do that and if we get them consistently then we can run through these as fast as as possible and we were just getting ready to get to that place where we would have had them in our hand before we before one we had your the predecessor leave and two we went into COVID so it's just trying to get us into some sort of consistency so that we can answer it consistently. Um, so thank you for stopping to do that. I don't, I, when I opened up my link, the only thing in my link was the agenda and the list. So I may have been missing some, I did not have any other attachments. Oh, I didn't either. I didn't either. So I was... Oh, you guys didn't? Um, yeah. Should... Oh, yeah. We didn't in there. Um, even for any of the other projects. Can anybody just saw. yeah? Can anybody just show it right now, or are sure, we I okay? Can show it. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. show it, and then we can Solve make that. a decision quickly. Tammy, thank you. Sure. Um, and while I'm pulling this up, uh, I did reach out to my BSL uh, counterparts, and. Uh, relayed some of the questions you guys had, and they are willing to come and do a presentation and answer any questions you guys may have. 
You mean in, with regards great. to the city's overall plan for street lighting? Um, yeah, just an overview of uh, how the process works. And um, then you guys uh, can ask him uh, whatever questions you guys may have about the process or. Okay. And, and can I can I say the following? It isn't the process as much is that I'm 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 interested in where is the point when the city has a conversation about the where it says what do we want our city to look like, and where are we going? And so one of the things is that because we keep overlaying, and then the next minute we will have approved let's just say a um, one of those granite stone type street lights because it matches the area. It's wonderful there in some of the residential districts. And then two seconds later, we've got to approve that somebody can just throw a box on it. And so there's just, there's a need in my opinion for a, a comprehensive conversation perhaps between multiple agencies around what does the city of Los Angeles wanna look like in 10 years, five years, whatever, so that this effort to still make us be a beautifully, a beautiful aesthetically thought about city is, is in the making versus, you know, we just kept slapping some stuff together. And then by the time we were through, we were, we were a hodgepodge that, that was our old habit of Los Angeles where we would just tear something down. And I have a feeling we're trying to be more than that. So it's that, I'm doing the cultural aesthetic conversation <clears throat> needs to be had. Well, maybe we can have this conversation with uh, Tammy, who was the person that's going to come and present to us? Richard. Richard. Because it kind of comes up. Go ahead, Daniel. Sure. Just to jump in. And I think that, that the mayor's office and uh, uh, Christopher Hawthorne had been starting that process. So we can also circle back with him to see yeah. uh, where that is looking at it from, from the larger aesthetic perspective that you're talking right. about, Commissioner. It's less about the process and more about the, the bigger picture thought that would be yeah. worthwhile. And for, to make sure the cultural affairs is included in it, by the way, because a lot of times agencies are making decisions without cultural affairs in it. Absolutely. And yeah. we're your cheerleaders. Yeah, <laughs> we're your advocates. but. Uh, Charmaine, I know, um, you know, pre-COVID, I think uh, there was a streetlight that was presented to John and I in a meeting with Danielle. That was sort of the direction where the city was going with the design, but then COVID hit and I think probably got kind of tabled, right, Daniel? Uh, yeah, it got tabled at that time. Yeah, so it would be great to pick it up again. Okay, right. Thank I'm going to have to jump off in a little bit, but um, yeah, well, maybe I, I'd love to understand on on the same topic because it's more than just street lighting. I think Commissioner Jefferson um, is referring to, and and I'm agreeing with as we have had multiple discussions about <laughs> how do we close the loop and get all on the same page. Um, I would like to know how the the mayor's com special committee on design and what came out of that is implemented, I guess, on building and safety's end before coming to us. Maybe like that's just a, more, a, a specific thing that I have in mind. Like how are they taking those directives and recommendations and applying it to the things that get approved that come then come before us? So I'd love to learn more about that if it's, how it's integrated into that their work. And I Great, think well, we'll, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we'll follow up. Uh, I will follow up with the mayor's office uh, and and get back to you. Okay, Thank you, signing Dan. off, everyone. It was good All to right. see and you. I apologize. Well, we we need to do Thank this you. vote before you, you go away. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. yeah. So can okay. we do it? Yeah, can that we'll, was what I was going to push for. Can can we? Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'll, I'll make this fast. Then, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so this is what you guys should be getting in your link every uh, month for the meeting. So apologies if you guys don't have it. I just checked and I see it in the link. So maybe there it's been locked somehow. We'll, we'll try to figure it out on our end, but 
every street light application has three parts. So attachment A is this, which is <clears throat> the application, the fee schedules on here. Um, Tammy, and, uh, I think Commissioner Gallardo has to leave in like oh. two minutes. So can you okay. Sorry. briefly show us the sites and then we can take a vote. Sure. And then so then attachment two will have like, um, what are they re, uh, replacing? What are they proposing? Uh, what are they removing? So here they're showing two existing, one proposed. And then it goes into a photo key map. And that um, ties into the photos that they show. Great. And you've reviewed all of these, right, Tammy? Yeah. So that you have preemptively made sure that everything is matching. So before it comes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I take care of all the technicalities beforehand. So you. Um, you, uh, once you guys take the vote, I can come back and explain a little bit more about how to read this document. That would be great, but I think we've got one minute, right, <laughs> Commissioner Gerardo, before you have to go. So um, addressing item streetlight submission uh, for matching streetlights, item A, B, C, and D, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Hope. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Gallardo. So maybe we can take a quick roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Jimenez, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. Commissioner Vincent. I abstain. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Ho, did I ask you? I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. <laughs> My vote is yes. Thank you. And I also vote yes. So uh, we have four yeses and one abstained, which is a no, correct? Um, so I think the item no, is I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Scrifano. Um, under our code, an abstention is counted as a yes vote. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, great. Thank you for specifying that. So the motion is approved. So, um, Commissioner Gallardo, thank you. <laughs> thank you for yeah, your and, you have um, to go. Just for clarity, I, I went into the agenda, I went into the small print, so I'm not quite sure where the link you're referring to is, but um, yeah. it would be helpful to have it highlighted if it is in small print. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've had exactly the same problem. So did I. Yeah, yeah, I don't think any of us had we had the we agenda have, link and we didn't have any of the item links. So what I, I'd like to suggest, I'd bye, like to, everyone. I'd, bye. Bye, bye, Commissioner. Um, I'd like to suggest um, that the commission president and the acting um, general manager uh, and the commission and maybe with um, Deputy Hodge uh, 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 have a meeting to go over the way we're structuring our meetings and what is needed and creating a consistency um, and kind of a professionality and what we'll expect to see that so that we can expedite and um, and and as Commissioner Jefferson is suggesting, adding to the cohesion um, of the face of the city. Okay, that sounds. That sounds and, fine to me. And I, and I just want to clarify on the matching street lights. All we need is what is the light pole they're trying, the image of the light pole they're trying to put in and the image of the location where they're trying to put it. We know that the staff has gone through and made sure that when they say it's matching, it's matching. The issue that we're having is just wanting to see what it is so we know what we're saying yes to. So in this instance... Yeah. We, we finally found how to see one, but we ran out of time with the other. We've moved this forward. We understand there are glitches here, but that's what we're trying to solve um, would be. And, and, and I just wanna bring one more thing up before we go. And that is, as you have that conversation that um, I agree with, with Commissioner Vincent on, the issue of timing 
and when something needs is needs to be approved and therefore this is the last moment when it can ever happen and you got to say yes because if you don't say yes this is over there is something just untenable about us being put in a position there has to be in my opinion a real reason why we have to be put in a position where we have to say yes whether we agree or not and so it is important for us to be clear about why is that happening? And in the case of, to cite the Venice project, to be pre precise, they presented us with something. We told them what we thought we saw was the problem. We were not objecting to the design. We were objecting to not being able to see the, the lettering given where it was gonna go, all that stuff. And I think they came back with a solution that probably didn't come anywhere close to matching what the artist was trying to do and they needed more time to find the solution that would have been the one that matched artistically what they presented in the first instance and the problem they were trying to solve. It comes back to us as if somehow or another we have created a problem. I, you know, sorry, but I have a problem with those kinds of things because if this has been going, if something has been going on for so long that by the time it comes to us, we just have to say yes, then we're being asked to rubber stamp. And sooner or later that bites somebody back in the rear end. And so I just want to, we need to somehow or another figure out what's the timing of someone's project? Where are they? If we're being presented with something that if we don't say yes, it dies on the vine, then we need to be told that right away so we can decide what sword we do or don't need to fall on. And if the community has said, said yes to something that they never had a conversation around, like the size of the lettering and whether they'll be able to read it, and that's the design they want, but it's going to fall apart, it, you know, then, then we need to be able to say to them, we're saying yes, we don't think you're going to be able to read the thing, but this is going to fall apart. And so we're, we are going to accept the community's opinion. This is a longer conversation, I suspect. I would love for us to have time on an agenda to deal with these issues. But I, I as a commissioner, and if I, when my time is up, would still feel the same way. But I don't think any commissioner should be asked to come on this commission and just say yes. And then have people tell us about timing. And even in the context of the, the, the the boxes that have to happen. There was a clear indication to us that this was, a, a, that it came down from above, that was solving an emergency issue that needed to be happening. We asked for some simple changes and adjustments and they did it. We didn't need to get treated like somehow or another we didn't understand. Just make the small change. And they made the change and they can still meet their deadline. And if, if the issue is it's not changeable, we shouldn't get treated like we're not playing right. We should get treated like we're doing our jobs. Free, by the way. I, I just needed the record to reflect that this says this. If this does not make me sound like I'm a team player, I am sorry, but I really don't think that it is appropriate to keep going, especially as we bring new commissioners on and they're trying to figure out how does this work and a brand new attorney comes on and a brand new staff person comes on and a new general manager will come on and we start getting in the wrong habits. So I, I just needed to stop and say this and then if they throw me off tomorrow, I just needed to be on the record. Well, thank you for, thank you Commissioner Jefferson and thank you Commissioner Vincent for voicing the concerns. I think, you know, I think- um, Daniel, I just yes. wanna echo that as well. Please note, for the record, that that is a major concern for me. Um, nobody ever wants to feel they have to make a decision um, under duress, essentially, mm -hmm. um, because we have the best interest of the city and the citizens in mind, and we'll never compromise that. But that does not give us the space or the time to think freely and think through the work that I believe the city deserves. Um, so please reflect that. That is also a concern for me. Thank you. And, and we don't want to be, we don't want to put 
the commissioners here in that position. That is not that is not what we would like to do. I think that we, I think what I'd like to do, and I'd like to work with Tammy and Felicia on this, I'd like to go back and look at where there are ways to better inform and to look at how we can get that information from the folks that are presenting to get the items to you as soon as possible so that we're not in this situation again. I think that's uh, that's what we would, I would like to see us be able to do these I think there there could be additional questions that we need to ask, could be different ways that we uh, look at the items to be able to address it, to, to look at this concern. And again, apologies also for the commission agenda uh, not being circulated. I'm deeply grateful to Juan, um, who has stepped in as our commission executive assistant. Well, he's also the department's public, in, uh, public information director um, and doing that. So... Again, appreciate it. And we will continue to work on our processes to be able to address uh, the concerns that you've raised. So thank you. And, and thank I, would, you. I would just like to add to that, that just for the commissioners to think about as we you know, take your comments and you know, I've been sort of writing down what, what I'm hearing and can think of ways to uh, begin to sort of ameliorate some of those uh, presentation challenges. But the commission uh, historically, and according to you know the admin code, is supposed to meet twice a month. And you know one of the challenges with meeting once a month is that the applicant has to wait thirty days before they can get back before you. So as we look at you know sort of improving uh, the commission meeting and presentations and the professionalization, you know as Commissioner Vincent said, um, I, I just want to also put that on the board that if the commission needs to consider that we need to return to a, uh, uh, a bi-monthly meeting that would allow an applicant to turn to have more time to come back before the commission, um, especially when they have a, uh, a compressed schedule. So I'm just going to put that out there um, that we need to look at that variable as well. No, I think that's a great point, Felicia. I'm, my previous commission, um, we met twice a month, and so a lot of times an applicant would come back in two weeks and present to us. And but we, we do appreciate all the work you guys are doing. We know this is incredibly challenging times for all of us. So, um, and there's been turnover, and you know, and I do want to thank Tammy because Tammy, you're doing a great job in presenting stuff to us, and you're new, and you know, we're just trying to make the process better for all of us as commissioners. So. I, uh, you know, none of this is meant like as a criticism. It's just, you know, whatever you guys can do to make it easier for us, because we are all volunteering our time and, and uh, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Commissioner Vincent, did you have something to say? I just wanted to reiterate, um, I want to take all of these comments um, from the, all of the commissioners, including myself, and turn it into an action item. As I said, I think I, I would love for you to, I would request that you call a special um, where we address the workings of the commission and we, um, we kind of redesign it, including understanding what is in our wheelhouse and what isn't. Um, I think that's really important, you know, that, that we understand that as well and so that we don't go off, to, you know, um, out of our lane as well. So, I just want to make that formal request for a meeting to, to address these issues. Great. Well, we'll work with our team um, to be able to do that so that we can provide that briefing and so we can work together on this. And, and again, thank you to all of you as commissioners for giving of your time um, to the city to be able to support, uh, to support the city in these efforts. Thank you, guys. We know you're Thank working you hard. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we know this is not an easy time. In the same room soon. Um, on that note, is there any other uh, items that we need to talk about? The next commission meeting is April 13th. Uh, the next commission meeting's uh, deadlines is March 23rd. Um, I've got, I'm so sorry, I have a jackhammer outside my office, so it's a little loud. But um, yeah, is there anything else we need to discuss or sh should I close the meeting?
I think we can adjourn. Gosh, yeah. Nice. And yeah. Thank and you. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky, for attending our meeting. Also, I apologize for not thanking you at the end. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Welcome to your job. <laughs> <laughs> We're great. To, it's good to have you. So uh, thank you all. all right. So thank the you, meeting everybody. is adjourned. Thank you. Ricky. Yeah. Bye. 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 -bye.